Hello and welcome to another video. In this video, I'm going to talk about the fascia of the lower extremity, starting from the pelvis and then working my way down to the foot. So the first fascia I want to talk about is the fascia iliaca, as you see here. But first, I'm just going to explain to you this picture really quick. Uh, this right here is the femur. You see, this is the hip bone of the oscoxa, and this is the sacrum. All right, and I've also driven the um, so the musculus uh, iliacus right here. Musculus iliacus is gonna originate from the fossa iliaca, and then you have the musculus psoas major, which comes from the vertebrae, and these two muscles together is gonna be called musculus iliopsoas, and they're gonna have the same insertion point, which is gonna be the um, uh, lesser trochanter of the femur. All right, so fascia iliaca is going to situate right here, and it's going to surround the musculus iliopsoas. And also keep in mind that this right here is the uh, inguinal ligament, starting from the uh, spina iliaca anterior superior to the pelvic part, and the fascia iliaca is going to be situated behind it. Okay, so. Uh, fascia iliaca is gonna again is gonna surround the iliopsoas and it's gonna form what is called the fibrous sheath around it. So it's gonna start at the margin, superior margin of the iliac part, and then go right here and form what is called the uh, ilio, it's called the iliopsoas uh, or sorry iliopectineal arch right here, iliopectineal arch. And at the iliopectineal arch, you're going to have uh, artery, the fem uh, femoral artery, femoral vein, and some lymph nodes. So lymph, no lymph nodes kind of called uh, deep uh, inguinal lymph nodes. All right. And the fascia iliaca, if you, if you continues down, it's going to fuse with the uh, fascia lata, which is going to be the fascia of the thigh. I'm going to talk about this later. Um, so that is the fascia iliaca. Another thing I want to talk about is the hiatus saponeus. Hiatus saponeus is going to be kind of a hole on the uh, fascia lata. Uh, and this hole is going to, if, if you look at the femoral artery and femoral veins, right, it's going to peak right here. And from the femoral vein, there's a vein going out called ve vena. Uh, saponea magna and that vein is gonna drain the uh, posterior muscles of the leg and uh, draw the blood to the uh, femoral vein all right and this uh, hiatus saponea is gonna have a superior and inferior part called cornu superior and cornu inferior that is the hiatus saponea now going over to the fascia obturata this is the obturator foramen and here you can find the um, musculus obturator interna here the internal obturator muscle starts at the obturator uh, foramen and then goes back right here behind the pelvis and then inserts at the greater trochanter of the femur and the fascia obturata is found actually on this muscle Another thing, a really important thing I want to mention here is the canalis obturatus, which is going to be here. And the canalis obturatus is really important because you have uh, the obturator vein, artery, and nerves going through here. And this is actually going to be the connection point with the, between the pelvis and the, the uh, leg. All right, now that we cover these three, the next thing I want to cover is the fascia glutea. The fascia glutea, this is the posterior aspect, keep in mind. So this is the posterior sacrum, and this is the posterior muscles. Here you can see the gluteus maximus. I've kind of cut the gluteus maximus so you can see all the other posterior muscles. So fascia glutea is going to surround this muscle. It's going to surround it, the gluteus maximus, and separating gluteus maximus from everything else. So the posterior muscles you can see here are all going to be the same kind of a, the same compartment, the same room, all going to be together, and the gluteus maximus is going to be alone. All right. 
So that is the fascia uh, gluteal. So now I'm gonna go over and talk about the fascia lata, fascia of the thigh. The fascia lata is gonna be consists of it's gonna have three rooms, three vagina osteofibrosa. Keep in mind that vagina means kind of a compartment or room and osteofibrosa. Osteo means that there are bone that are gonna be a part of forming this room. Alright, and it's gonna have four vagina fibrosa. It's gonna be a room where the bones is not a part of this uh, kind of compartment. Alright, so now we'll start by drawing the, the uh, femur. Draw the femur like this, femur, and then we can draw the fascia lata around it. <laughs> so if I get it right, so here, this is the fascia lata. All right, and this is the femur, and we can start with the four uh, vagina vagina fibrosa first. So vagina fibrosa. Uh, there are four, there are three muscles actually that's gonna have an own compartment, and then one for the the uh, femoral veins and arteries. So, if we start with that one right here, and keep in mind that this is anterior, this is posterior, this is lateral, and and medial. All right. So, which muscle do we find most laterally? It's gonna be musculus fascia lata. All right, musculus fascia lata is going to be alone, and then up here we're going to have a muscle called musculus um, sartorius. Musculus sartorius. All right, and then another muscle is going to be right about here. It's going to be called musculus gracilis. Gracialis. Always get this one wrong. <laughs> All right, and then this is one, two, three, and then the fourth vaginal fibrosa is going to be right about here. It's going to lead the femoral artery, femoral vein, and femoral nerves. All right. So that is the four vaginal fibrosa. Now we'll start with the three vaginal osteofibrosa. And again, osteo means bone, so the bone is going to be a part of these compartments. So we're going to have anterior compartment, right? And what separates the anterior and and uh, uh, the medial compartment, medial here, sorry. Uh, what separates the anterior and medial compartment is going to be the septa intermuscular mediala. It's gonna go right by here. Septa intermusculata mediala. All right, and then we're gonna have septa intermusculata posterior. It's gonna be right about here. Septa intermusculata posterior. And then we're gonna have one more right about here. This one's going to be called septa intermuscular laterala. So now we have our compartments, right? So three vaginal osteofibrosa, that's three compartments. So we can start with the uh, anterior uh, vaginal fibrosa. So this right here is going to be called the vagina osteofibrosa anterior all right and anterior and then the anterior aspect we're gonna find what's called the musculus quadriceps right and the most superficial muscle of the musculus quadriceps is gonna be around about here you can call it right. this one's called musculus rectus anterior all right and then here and about here Gonna, we're gonna have a muscle called musculus 
clusters lateralis. All right, and we're gonna have muscle here, clusters inted mediola, and a muscle here, clusters mediola. All right, quadriceps, four muscles, that's four muscles. And then we'll go over to the medial compartment. The medial compartment is gonna be muscles of adduction, all right? So we have musculus um, tachio longus and musculus tachio brevis. And then we're going to have muscle here called musculus tachio longus. All right, and then this compartment is going to call the vagina osteofibrosa mediola because it's on the medial side. All right, now going over to the last one. This one is let's do like that. This is vagina osteofibrosa posterior. Posterior. <laughs> okay, and the posterior one, remember the muscles here are all dependent on where on the leg you cut, right? So on the posterior one, we're gonna have, let's do like that. If you remember on the posterior side of the thigh, we have biceps, right? Biceps, it's biceps, and what is biceps? Uh, well, it's a short head. And the biceps femoris. And this one, call this the biceps long head. And then we have here something called musculus semi tenuis. And then a muscle here called something like this musculus. Um, semi membranous all right that is the fascia lata the fascia of the uh, of the thigh so now we're gonna go over to the uh, actually one more thing i want to talk about is um right here so this is the posterior aspect of your knee uh, this right here is the musculus semi tendinous and this is musculus Biceps femoris longus, and here you can see musculus gastrocnemius of the uh, of the leg, the crudis. All right, and right in between all those, you're gonna have a fossa right here. You can actually feel it on your leg if you stand up. You can feel it if you would feel um, on the posterior of your knee. It's kind of a, a thin, uh, it's got a really thin part here. That's called fossa popliteae, and here you can find the popliteal vein and artery and you can find the tibial nerve and what protects this is something called fascia popliteal all right so that's what i want to cover and now we're going to go over to must to the fascia of the uh, of the leg and the fascia of the leg let's hope i get this right again um you can start with the tibia and uh, fibula. All right, so and then we can start drawing the fascia. And this fascia is called fascia cutis. And you feel on your leg the tibia. You can feel it on your lateral side of your leg. You can do like that. Hmm. It's acceptable. <laughs> uh, this is fascia. Crudis, crudis, all right, crudis again means leg. So fascia crudis has uh, different compartments as well. So what separates the, if you, first off, if you remember what's in between the tibia and fibula, there's something called membrana interosea. Membrana rosea, all right? 
and then uh, what separates the anterior compartment and the um, lateral compartment let's just give you if this is anterior posterior this is the fibula and remember fibula is always on the lateral side so this is lateral and tibia is on the uh, medial side so medial all right um now we're gonna let's see the anterior and the lateral compartment is separated by a septa this is called septa intimusculata anterior septa intimusculata anterior and then the lateral compartment and posterior compartment is separated again by septa intimusculata posterior all right so now we have the anterior lateral and posterior compartment and actually something on the posterior compartments also separated by lamina profunda so if we go like this all right let's actually remember that there's a superficial fascia here as well on the other side so yeah <laughs> all right it goes like that uh, so this right here is called lamina profunda and remember profunda means uh, deep so th this is a lamina deep on the deep side so this is the first layer of muscles in the posterior aspect of the leg and this is the second uh, the second layer all right so we can start with the anterior one so this this anterior one is called the anterior vagina or vagina fib uh, osteofibrosa anterior and again vagina is compartment osteofibrosa means that if they're osteo means that there is a bone that are going to be a part of this compartment as you see here so vagina osteofibrosa and here you can find musculus tibialis anterior just do it like that musculus tibialis anterior all right and then you're gonna have two muscles here this one is going to call the extensor digitorum longus and then this one is called extensor halux and digitorus brevis digitorus brevis all right so this is the um posterior this is the anterior aspect now going over to the lateral aspect here we have two muscles called musculus fibrosa anterior anterior or no longus i'm sorry longus and musculus fibrosa brevis long head and short head all right so that is the lateral one and the lateral compartment is called the vagina osteo fibrosa lateralis all right now we go over to the posterior one the posterior again is separated into two parts so this one the most superficial one is called vagina fibrosa vagina fibrosa posterior and now why is this called vagina fibrosa posterior and not vagina osteofibrosa i'll give you three seconds to think of the answer one two three <laughs> uh, this is called vagina fibrosa posterior because there is no bone that is going to be a part of this uh this um compartment so the muscles you find here is going to be let's do like that this is musculus soleus then we have musculus it's a hard name musculus gastrocnemius mediale and 
Hold. Så, musculus, Astro, Mimus, Astral. Let's make your life easier. <laughs> Uh, and now on this compartment right here, this is called vagina osteofibrosa posterior. All right? And here you can find musculus tibialis posterior. Musculus tibialis posterior. Should have made the drawing a little bigger, <laughs> running out of space. So we're going to have a muscle here called flexor digitorum longus flexor digitorum longus and one here flexor hallucis longus flexor hallucis longus hallucis means big toe all right so that is the fascia crudis fascia of the um, leg another thing i want to talk about it, or, and now we're going over to the fascia of the foot but I'm just going to mention here that the fascia crudis goes down and forms, forms what is called the retinoculum musculorum of the leg. And if we can start with that, I have driven these pictures right here. And here you can see the uh, dorsal, the dorsal uh, view of the foot and the lateral view with the medial view, actually. All right, so um, we can start with the, this one. This is called Retinoculum Musculorum Extensorum Superior. Musculum Extensorum. Okay. Musculorum Extensorum uh, Superior. And everything on this side is going to be uh, Extensorum. It's going to something that's going to extend the foot or the uh, toes. All right. And this retinoculum extensorum is just going to be a, like a protective uh, shield around the tendons of the muscles. And this right here, this is the retinoculum musculorum extensorum inferior, so superior inferior. So retinoculum musculorum extensorum inferior. All right, so I have a Y shape here. So retinoculum musculorum extensorum inferior is going to have uh, four canals running through it or four uh, or these canals lead the tendons of the muscles to the its insertion point so the first canal is going to be right here and this canal is called the is tendons of the musculus tibialis anterior anterior the tendons of it remember all right, it's going to run underneath it, it's going to protect it. And then it's going to be, uh, the, and then the next canal is a tendons of the extensor hallucis longus. Extensor hallucis longus. All right, the hallucis goes down to the uh, big toe. And then the third canal, it's actually a canal you can see really see here, but it's a canal that leads the uh, arteries and veins on the dorsal side of the uh, foot and the third can or oh, the fourth canal sorry is going to be the um, tendons for the extensor digitorum longus extensor digitorum longus all right that's the fourth canal that's going to go through the retinoculum musculorum extensorum inferior. All right. Now we're going over over to the post the um, or the medial aspect of the foot. Um, on the medial aspect of the foot, you can have a retinoculum here as well, and this retinoculum is uh, retinoculum musculorum flexorum. It's going to be the muscles, uh, the tendons responsible for flexing the uh, pelvis or the uh, toes, so retinoculum musculorum uh, flexor oh, flexorum All right, this is the uh, connective tissue or the sheath that, that protects the um, tendons of the muscles that's responsible for flexing All right. So here we we'll also have four canals running through it. The, f the first one is called, uh, or the tendons of the tibialis posterior. 
all right and then you have a second channel is tendons for the um, flexor digitorum longus gonna be this one longus and then you're gonna have the um, tendons for the flexor hallucis longus All right, and there's one more canal that goes through here, and this is also the arteries and veins for, uh, on the posterior aspect. All right, and then uh, one more thing is the lateral side. So uh, remember, this is the big toe, toe, and where do you have the big toe on the medial side, right? So on the lateral side, you have uh, the fibula, right? On the fibula, on the lateral side, you're gonna have two retinoculum musculorum, fibulorum, and superior inferior, so retinoculum. I haven't really draw, uh, draw that, I'm sorry. <laughs> so retinoculum musculorum, fibularium, so superior and inferior. And there is one tendon that runs through the uh, these ten these uh, uh, connective tissues, these uh, protective shield, shields sheaths. It's going to be the uh, tendons for the fibularis longus and brevis. So tendons for fibularis longus and brevis. All right. So um, now that we have gone through that, uh, I just want to mention also that there are seven tendons that go run through uh, the dorsal side of the foot. It's, um, the first one is uh, tendons for the tibialis anterior, it's going to be here, and tendons for the second one is tendons for extensorum, uh, extensor hallucis longus, and then the um, tendons for muscle extensor digitorum longus is going to be here the yeah halus is longus and digitorum longus uh, and then fourth is right here this one is uh, musculus tibialis posterior and then the fifth one is musculus uh, flexor halusis longus and then the sixth is musculus flexor digitorum longus and then the seventh is right here it's going to be the fibulata longus and brevis Right, so now go over to the plantar side. This is the plantar side. Um, you're gonna have uh, two really important um, tendons right here. It's gonna be the first one is, is the tendon for the flexorum digitorum pedis. It's gonna be five of them. So four for the um, these uh, toes, and then one for the big one, hallucis. They both gonna meet here and form the tendons for the flexor digitorum pedis, and then one called tendo, tendo, uh, the tendon of the fibularis longus. If you remember, the muscle goes under the foot and inserts at the uh, bones of the uh, big toe. And then the last thing I want to talk about in this video is the fascia around the metatarsal bone. So if you go ahead and cut the foot right about here, you're gonna see the metatarsal bones. This is the first, second, third, fourth, and fifth metatarsal bones. So, first thing here is the lamina superficialis is going to uh, be situated right about here. And the lamina superficialis is going to cover the tendons of the long and short extensor muscles. Right? And then we're going to have the um, lamina profunda, which is going to be right underneath it. And lamina profunda is going to cover the interosseal muscles. It's going to go around here and fuse in the middle on the plantar side. And what's gonna do is that it's gonna, yeah, again, it's gonna cover all the muscle, the interosseal muscles. So here you have the dorsal interosseal muscles, and then you have the plantar interosseal muscles, and you also have the abductor uh, hallucis, the uh, the flexor hallucis, and here are the digitimini muscles. And with the plantar, the aponeurosis planaris. And the lamina profunda is going to form kind of a cavity for the flexor, uh, the tendons for the flexor muscles, right? 
So, and then the last thing I actually want to talk about is the aponeurosis plantaris, which reaches from the calcaneus to the the um, uh, toes, all the five toes actually. Right? That was the fascia of the lower extremity, and I hope that was helpful.